So this video is just going over trigonometry and we're looking at an exam question and in the exam question it practices uh, our use of angles. We can use exterior angles. The sine rule and the cosine rule are also used in this exam question. Uh, so that's basically the question and what we're given there. Um, in that first part just remember um, how to label angles. So just to do a little bit of revision there it's saying the angle DCA is equal to 82 degrees. So what that angle is referring to is I start at the D, I then go to the C, and then I finish at the A. So starting at D, over to C, and finishing at the A. So the angle they're talking about is the angle which is 82 degrees. And basically it's always the middle letter that they refer to. So that angle C is 82 degrees. If I come over to the second part there, which is the angle CAD is 50 degrees. Again, that starts at C goes to A and down to D, it's the middle of those two line segments, which is the 50 degrees. So that's how we label our angles. So just a little bit of revision on that. And this question, just to scroll down and I'll just, till we see what it looks like, uh, it's going to ask us to find sizes of angles. Um, it's going to ask us to get lengths of sides and so on. So there's, as I said, a lot of use of angles, cosine rule and sine rule going on here. So let's look at the first part to this question. So it is asking us to find the size of the angle ADC. So the angle ADC, let's locate it first. So you're starting at A, you're going down to D and across to C. So they're trying to get you to find this angle here between those two line segments, basically located at D. Again, it's always that middle letter when they label the angle. And what I'm gonna use here is, I'm gonna use the fact of the three angles in a triangle adding up to 180 degrees. So I'm using that triangle ADC. And we know that if I add the 50 degrees that I'm given, plus the 82 degrees that I'm given, and take that away from 180, I will find the size of the angle ADC. So when I add 50 and 82, and I get a 132 degrees, and then I'm going to take that away from 180 and that's leaving me with the angle ADC as 48 degrees. So that's the first part of that question done. Not too hard, I don't think. Uh, looking at the next part of that question, it's asking us to find the size of the angle ADB. Let's locate it first. So ADB, so starting at A, coming down to D and across to B. So it's asking us to find that angle there between the two line segments. So it's that one that I've highlighted in green. Uh, once again, it's that middle angle that you're looking for. Now, two ways you could do it. Uh, first way you could look at finding the size of that angle is remember that the two angles on that straight line or all angles on a straight line must add up to 180 degrees. So I could just go 180 degrees minus the angle that we've found in here. And we know that this angle in here we found on the earlier part of part one is 48 degrees. So if I take 48 degrees from 180 degrees, I'll get 132 degrees. And that's our answer for that second part to part one. Now, you could also use your knowledge of exterior angles. And exterior angles basically just tell us that the outside angle on a triangle is always equal to the sum of the two interior angles. So look at these two angles. If I add the 82 and the 50 together, I get that exterior angle. And it's the triangle there that I'm looking at in order to find that angle size. But I think the way we've done it there is a little bit easier than using our exterior angle. Okay, so that's part one. Let's have a look at what part two now is asking us to do. Part two is asking us to find the length uh, DC. So let's just take a look at our picture for a second and see, well, where is DC located? It's down that uh, bottom end of the shape. So I'm just going to highlight it here. So it's getting us to find this length here. Now, in order to solve this part of the question, the triangle that I'm focusing on is the triangle ADC. So I'm just making a triangle out of it. So I'm only going to focus in on this triangle here. And I'm just going to mark in this angle. We now know that this angle we found in part one to be 48 degrees. So that's everything I know. So I'm just going to come down and I'm going to sketch out that triangle now. So let's draw ADC. So if I sketch the triangle A, 
DC and fill in everything we know about it. I know that this side is seven centimeters in length. I have an angle of 50 degrees. I have this angle down at D as 48 degrees and I have my third angle at 52 degrees. And remember that those three angles add up to 180 degrees. And what they're getting us to do is find the length of this bottom at length D to C. Now the formula I'm gonna use for this is using our sine rule. Now our sine rule is located in our log tables and it's written as A over sine A is equal to B over sine B is equal to C over sine C. Now you don't need to use all three parts of that formula. You only ever need to take two parts of it. So basically what I do is I always just leave off the end. That's what we do. So we're only looking at A over sine A, B over sine B. And then I come to my picture and I'm going to label the sides with A's and B's. So the, the lowercase is A and B, the sides, and the capital A and B are the angles. So I'm given the seven, so I'm just going to put an A at the seven because I have that length. And I'm going to put a B beside the length that I'm trying to find. And again, remember, this is the length we're trying to find, so we're going to put a B here. And I'm not using the third side, so I'm not going to bother putting a letter on that side. You can put the C on it if you want. Now look at the uh, letters in the formula. They're different to the letters on the shape. So don't get confused by trying to match them up. You don't have to match them up. So I'm just relabeling my picture with the red letters from the formula. Remember then that the angles must correspond to the side. So if the side A is across from the angle of 48 degrees, that must now be my angle A. And the side B is across from the angle of 50 degrees, so that must be my angle B. So just, you always have to correspond the lengths with the angles and they're across from it. Again, I don't need to use that 52 degrees. And if I fill in my formula now, I have uh, length A, which is seven over sine A, which is sine of 48, which is equal to the length DC, that I'm trying to find, which is my B, over my sine B, which is sine of 50 degrees. So that's my formula filled in, and you will always only use the sine rule when you're missing one piece of information. So see the way here, I'm missing only the DC. And I have a fraction equals to a fraction, so to solve fractions, I cross multiply. So I'm multiplying the top by the bottom on both sides. So that is giving me DC multiplied by sine 48. So I'm just gonna go DC multiplied by sine 48. You can type in sine 48 now and get a decimal on your calculator if that's what you want, but I'm just making it easier by not using decimals. And then I'm multiplying again on my calculator seven by sine 50, but I'm just not going to multiply just yet. Then to get DC on its own, I'm dividing both sides by the sine 48, or again, if you have that as a decimal, it's fine. Just remember to always go maybe to about three decimal points. And when I go to my calculator now and divide that fraction, I'm getting uh, 7.2 centimeters. And the question is asking me to give it to the nearest centimeter. So that is just giving me seven centimeters. So therefore, DC is equal to seven centimeters in length. Now, again, it doesn't matter if you turn them into decimals uh, prior to your division, but you should hopefully have got 7.2. Okay, that is part two. So let's have a look at part three and see what it's asking us to do. So it's asking us to find the length of the side BC. So let's just come back up to our picture here for a second and see where that is. So BC. And BC is the full length of the base of this shape. Now we know that part of it is five centimeters or five units. Uh, it is given in centimeters. We've already just found now what the length from uh, D to C is. If you scroll down there, we've just found DC as seven centimeters. So I'm just gonna fill in my seven centimeters here. So that means that the full length of that line, B to C is five plus the seven. So that's straightforward enough. So I'm just using my answer from part two, my DC. So I'm just gonna add my five and my seven, and that's my answer there. So five centimeters plus seven centimeters is equal to 12 centimeters.
Okay, that's not too hard. Uh, final part is asking us to find the length of the side AB. So let's come up and see where AB is located on my picture. So AB is located uh, over here on the side of my shape. This length here. Now, hopefully you can spot that I'm not going to use this triangle here uh, in order to find it. I'm just going to draw the triangle. I'm not going to use this one because I don't know much information about it. I don't know really any of the angles. I know we did earlier find this angle here, but that's about it. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to use the full triangle. I'm going to go from A to C and then to B. So I'm taking this large triangle. So I'm forgetting about that line down the middle of the small triangle. And I'm going to sketch out that triangle now and I'm going to fill in the angles and the sides that I know. And remember what we know. We know that this, ang this length is 7, the full length of the base is 12. I need to find this length here, so I'm going to call it an X. And you know that this angle here is 82. So that's basically what I'm going to sketch out now. So let's draw out that triangle and see uh, where that brings us. So let's do a quick sketch and sketching will always help us uh, to visualize what we're asked to do. And I have, as we said, seven, um, 82 degrees. We found this to be 12 and this is the side AB and I'm going to call it X. That's the length I need to find. Now you can hopefully see here that you can't use the sign rule because you're missing too much information for the sign rule. Try it yourself, but you'll see that you're missing uh, too much information there. Um, so what I'm going to use is our final type of formula here for a non-right angle triangle, which is our cosine rule. So I'm going to practice our cosine rule here now. Again, it's in your log tables and it's written as a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. So that means 2 multiplied by b multiplied by c multiplied by cos a. Again, it doesn't matter which sides are your a's, b's and c's. You just have to be very careful labeling it at the start. This capital A stands for an angle and it must correspond to this small a, which is a length. They're the two that you have to get right. So if I come over to my picture, I'm given the 82. So I'm going to call that my angle A. And the side corresponding with that angle A is the side that I'm trying to find. And I'm going to put an A beside it. Okay, so the angle A must always correspond with the side A. Because of my formula, that's the only angle that I use. Now my B and my C in the formula are the other two sides. And it doesn't matter which one is your A and which one is your B. So I'm just going to put a B uh, beside the 12 and I'm going to put a C beside the 7. So like I said, it doesn't matter uh, which one is your A and your, or sorry, your B and your C. So I'm just going to get rid of my highlighters here just before we do it. Okay, and I had a B squared here. Okay, so let's fill it in. My A is going to be my X, what I'm trying to find, or you can just call that B A or AB if you want. And that is equal to B squared, which is 12 squared, plus C squared, which is seven squared, minus two multiplied by B, which is 12, multiplied by C, which is seven, multiplied by cos A, which is 82. Now you can just type that straight into your calculator if you want, I'm just gonna do it in stages. 12 twelves are 144, seven sevens are 49, minus two twelves multiplied by seven, multiplied by cos 82. So I'm just gonna use my calculator for that, and it's coming up as 23, 0.38. So just to clarify here, what I've done here is I've multiplied that part on my calculator and I've got 23.38. If I tidy that up a wee bit, x squared is equal to 144 plus 49 minus 23.38. That is giving me 168.62. And in order to get x on its own, it's x squared. So I need to get the square root of both sides which is giving me the square root of 168.62 and that's a little bit over or just shy of 13 isn't it uh, which is 12.98 centimeters question wants us to give it to the nearest centimeter so x is equal to 13 centimeters in length okay so that is revision of the cosine rule sine rule and some angles in the triangle Thank you for watching another tutorial video from Tullamats. Make sure and subscribe.